You're listening to the Sports Coma, your new number one podcast on everything Saints, Pelicans, and a lot more. And now, here's your host, Big Q and the Guys. Welcome back to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys. We're back off break. Talking about the free agent frenzy the Saints hit the first day of free agency. Blood in the water. Running. They pick up three new Saints, including one they decided to sign prior to the break. So I guess you can group them all together, including the signing of Drew Brees, five uh, transactions, getting your star quarterback back, getting experience in the safety position and the personage of one Kurt Coleman, who will ensure the Minnesota miracle, as ghastly as that is, is never repeated ever in the history as long as he's back there. <laughs> also, we have Patrick Peterson experience, and he's in the prime of his career coming off four interceptions. Patrick Robinson, my brother. Patrick I P- wish we did have Patrick Peterson. <laughs> I'm thinking about that old Hunter Badger and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, P- Patrick Robinson, four four interceptions last year in a pretty good year looking for a payday. He got four years out the Saints here. He's coming in as a slot man. Uh, that will make that depth in the secondary a lot better. And then among other news, other things as well as you know, our new linebacker, middle linebacker, Demario, Demario Davis, the hard-hitting, all-world, everything guy that just steps in for the Jets last year, had a supreme amount of tackles. It's a supreme tackle. I invite all Saints people who are not familiar with him to look up his highlight films and footage and get familiar with this guy. This guy is a football player. Yes. So that's Tackle good to see. Machine. Always good to get those guys in here. Now, DC, let's talk about some Saints that were here last year uh, in, a, in the personage of Willie Sneed. Now, Willie Sneed, of course, was tendered out of all the other restricted uh, agents that the Saints had, the restricted players that the Saints had. They only tendered one guy. Now, of course, I'm going to say this right now. Delvin Bro was not tendered. He was uh, The Saints decided to outright release him and he's Brandon set Coleman. He to visit the Broncos, huh? Yeah, he's, he got a visit with the Broncos, so he might very well might end up there. Brandon Coleman was released as well. and But the only one tendered, well, at the lowest tender, which was a $1.9 million tender, was Willie Sneed. Now, of course, he's going to go out there and see if he can test the free agent waters and maybe have somebody uh, to – kind of give him opportunity i think willie sneed will be back in the saints black and gold for another year at that 1.9 million i i would be i wouldn't say i would be surprised if somebody was to get him but i don't think so i think with all the wide receivers that's out there i think it's a pretty crowded market wide receiver wise willie sneed's kind of down after that terrible year he had with all of the crap that happened with the DWI and all this foolishness he kind of hurt himself coming into this year i think he'll come back more productive uh, and maybe looking like the Willie Sneed of the first year to kind of prove himself all over again to see if he can get a good deal. DC, what's your thoughts on Willie Sneed? Uh, bittersweet. Um, it's a guy that you definitely don't want to lose if you can sign him for a pretty minimal. Uh, 1.9 million chicken tender. You know, yeah. He, he had amazing years the last two years, but last year he had a drunk driving incident before mm-hmm. the season started and. Pretty much messed everything uh, up with him. You know how Sean Payton is. Once you get in this doghouse, that's a wrap. Yeah, man. And then you in a contract year. I'm not about to help you make no money. Right. And you 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 doing stupid stuff like that. So, um, hopefully he comes and tra- and come comes in training camp with a lot of fire, and uh, he turns into that guy that we knew he could be. If so, uh, and we sign a guy like Jordy Nelson or get a, a tight end Tyler Eifert, uh, uh, Ebron, all these other people they got out there. Man, we're looking at a really dangerous potent offense again. You you got the, the 2011s offense if we can get a tight end and maybe don't no forget more Julius receiver. Thomas. He was released by Julius the Dolphins, Thomas so well. he's out there as well. And I remember the Scenarius Saints looking at Jenkins, him. Uh, I remember a couple years ago. I remember a couple right, a Ferris Jenkins. I Seferius, think he's looking Seferius at a few Jenkins. more two other teams too. Uh, Bill and his he team kind of built his though. team. He's, he's probably be a good all. That's true. Player. He is that. And uh, he was a second round draft pick by the Bucks a few years. First round month. draw pick. Huh? Was it a, fr- a I second? I thought it was a second. We'll have to I check think that. He's a first round draft. We're going to check that. But anyway, that's why everybody's so hard on him because he's supposed to be a lot better than what he is. Right. Well, I think one of the things when you dealing with the Saints, uh, 
when you look at what they're doing, you know, you look at them. I remember a couple of years ago, they were looking at Julius Thomas, the pass catching uh, tight end with the Jaguars uh, before so he much, got to though. the Jags. Right. But that was prior to those injuries. He had a few nicks in that, but as he get a, get along, you know, he kind of but, – but they were looking at him for a while. I wonder – that will look kind of interesting to see if the Saints would go in that direction. get him for cheap, man. I mean, he ain't might, done nothing might. in the last three years. And he had some big old paydays. Jacksonville, I think, gave him a ton of money. And – uh because the Broncos wouldn't pay him. That's why why he left. So we probably could get him for cheap, man. He didn't do a lot in Jacksonville at all. He had a massive contract. Right. He did make a lot of money. And that's that's for certain. Uh, but anyway, let's move to our next talk. We're going to talk about uh, the Alex Okafor situation. Of course, you know, we know about George Johnson coming back. The Saints did re-up with George Johnson to bring him back. He had a very special season coming in and getting, what, six sacks and a handful of games. It was pretty interesting to have middleweight part of the season. I mean, not middleweight, but kind of toward the back end of the season, they bring in George Johnson. And George Johnson gets like, what, four, five, six sacks in that year? Uh, last year? Uh, he, yeah, I think he had like, he had like four or five Pretty sacks. good. Pretty good for George Johnson. Yeah. The Saints read up with him. And I was thinking to myself when that happened, I was like, wow, they signed George Johnson before Alex Okafor. Maybe some concern about that injury that could be kind of keeping the Saints well, looking. But, this, but they're serious, saying man. that they're interested, but he's going to see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Thursday, March the 5th. So uh, what, what's, what's your taking on that, man? Um, I know you looked into this. What you thinking on it? I think uh, I think we we take him back if we can get him back again. Everything is a budget now. Mickey Loomis then paid the the people he wanted to pay top dollar to. I don't think we're gonna see any big uh, money signings. Not too many more. We don't have a lot more money to spend. So everything now is gonna be on the budget, and you gotta save money for the draft players or create money. Um, so that, that's a good way to try to negotiate with him. Um, we look at the defense we got. Hey, look, we got a linebacker. We're going to have a top five defense. You want to be a part of this? Come prove yourself again. A lot of pressure will be off of you. Um, come prove you can play, and we'll give you money, you know, the next year. So they're going to try to get him on another basically prove it deal again. And Okafor going through Achilles tear, man, that is a tough injury, man. It is a hell of a rehab. Well, I'm saying that, he, that he's well and he's ready to come back. You I have know, to prove but it, he so. had to go through a lot. And, uh, you know, um, he, he was on a prove it deal last year. At what point did he get paid? <laughs> you know right, what I'm saying? So well, I think he's going to try to see what yeah, he can get. Yeah, have to do it one more year. Um, yeah. But I don't think anybody's going to want to give him major money coming off an Achilles injury because you lose a lot of your athleticism. Um, and that's a big thing, being a defensive end coming off the edge, talking about second quarterback. Well, the, the team just told me that Austin Safarian's Jenkins was drafted by Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the second round of the 2014 draft. He played college at Washington. Uh, he's 25 years of age. And currently right now they're saying that he is – he his hometown, uh, I think it's Austin, his hometown. Is, he was born in Wisconsin. So University of Washington. Okay, I see what he's saying. But anyway, uh, they have a few teams looking at him: uh, Bears, Jaguars, Colts, and a few other teams that's interested in Safarian. Now they have some reports linking the Saints to him. I don't know how true that is. I don't see on his uh, so far on his itinerary that he is going to visit the Saints. I, I don't see that anywhere. So um, we'll just have to wait and see. Maybe perhaps the Saints do have an idea. They did try to get Jimmy Graham, so they are open and, and to. Uh, bringing in another tight end uh, to in Austin Ferris Jenkins was uh, was of course listed, but we'll just have to keep our eyes open. Now they do have a few other tight ends out there. Let's talk about the fact that Jimmy Graham uh, ultimately he ends up signing a deal to go to uh, Green Bay along with Muhammad Wilkinson, who both those guys are Saints at the same time were courting. Both of those guys went to Green Bay and whatever reason got wooed by whatever the Green Bay Packers was selling up there. Maybe they ate some hypnotic cheese or whatever, but they ultimately ended up signing deals. Uh, Muhammad Wilkinson, a one-year deal with Green Bay. Jimmy Graham got a three-year deal, pretty good deal for him to to ca- catch passes from uh, Aaron Rodgers. And pretty much what that does is upon those guys signing, Jimmy Graham in particular, the, the Packers decide to outright release Jordy Nelson, who's a big wide receiver. He's 33 years old. He had a share of injuries. Uh, one of Aaron Rodgers' best friends on the team, favorite targets on the team. He was upset by that move. They didn't give him the option uh, to restructure. They just outright released him. And uh, he's on the free agent market right now looking for a home to go to. And uh, maybe the Saints. The Saints were one of the three teams that's listed as a possible suitor 
for Jordy Nelson. Uh, let's talk about uh, those possible acquisitions uh, the Saints uh, are possibly still looking at after signing a few of these other guys. Jordy Nelson, what, what's the thinking on that? Jordy Nelson would be huge, man. Uh, I don't know how much money he's going to command. He had a pretty down season, but he didn't have his quarterback. And before that, he came off a major injury. Um, he's definitely lost. Lost a little bit of speed. Brett he's Huntley, never a top speed guy. DC, let me say this: Brett Huntley would make Jerry Rice at his at his top <laughs> look like crap. That guy they is just terrible. They, they actually got rid of Brett Huntley, and they man. put Deshaun Kaiser in there. Thank goodness he was garbage, <laughs> man. And I don't really say that too much about yeah. football players, you think but Deshaun fo- Kaiser can be the heir apparent. I think there, Deshaun Kaiser would be better than with Brett Huntley. Maybe he can make because Kaiser actually wears a, a quarterback helmet and not a punter helmet. <laughs> You know, so I mean, and he wears it, pants uh, below his belly button. It, it just the guy just don't look like a quarterback to me, man. I mean, not in terms of I mean his actions and he can I mean, you have all those weapons and that was the best you could do. You know, you couldn't complete passes downfield. Yeah. Just terrible, man. Anyway, I look at him, like uh, who who want to follow that? Like, uh, oh man, me. You talk about mediocre, but but we'll, we'll go ahead on with, with the Jordan Nelson comment. Jordan Nelson is, uh, I think, at this stage in his career, he's still above average receiver. Um, he can do a lot. With a with a guy like Drew Brees or Tom Brady or your heir parents, but if you put him on a team without great quarterback play, I think you're just wasting your money. But we could get a lot out of him. But um, the teams that could pay him a lot of money, maybe they don't want to fork over big bucks. So maybe you could see Jordan Nelson in the Saints jersey, which would be amazing. Lined up with Ted Ginn and Michael Thomas, what? <laughs> amazing. That'd be amazing, man. You get Jordan Nelson to be kind of. Uh, your second outside receiver, uh, another possession type Boy, guy. Could you imagine that? Yeah, man. And you do that, and you get some form of a tight end. I mean, the offense would be unstoppable. Who do you stop? You want to stop the running game? Okay, well we just pass one. Game. It's amazing. <laughs> anyway, the little background on Jordan Nelson. He was released uh, by the Packers. Like I said, uh, he's six foot three, two hundred seventeen pounds. He racked up about five hundred and fifty catches for more than seventy eight hundred yards. 69 touchdowns on his career, during his 11-year career with the Packers. Amazing. He was a favorite target of Aaron Rodgers and a very good friend. And Rodgers had a very heartfelt uh, tweet about him. And uh, he said he couldn't exemplify the words 87 means to me. No teammate exemplify what it means to be a Packer quite like him. From living in Green Bay full-time, his incredible contribution to the city, state, and region was consistent, reliable, on the field. This definitely a sad day, the toughest part of the business. This will never be quite like white lightning. There will never be quite like light, white lightning. So that was a tweet from Aaron Rodgers. So we might, hopefully, you know, he was in the in Oakland. He goes to Seattle and then the Saints next. So hopefully the Saints, uh, we can make a, a off of the womb. But anyway, we're about to go into our next break. When we come back, we'll finish up our topics. Then on other potential Saints, uh, Tyran Matthew, Derek Don Terrace, Pope, Pope, and a few other per- people. Uh, that they could be looking at. You listen to the Sports Coma. Stay with us. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is the Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. 